Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, I've done a lot of tutorials on Flash, which you may have seen, but I thought it was about time that I did some tutorials on After Effects, which is another really big piece of animation software. It's bigger and more versatile than Flash is, and at first it can seem a little bit intimidating. So I thought I'd do an introductory video that covers the absolute basics of what After Effects does. So we're ready to begin. When you open After Effects, you'll get a window that looks something like this. I'm using CS6 here, but you can follow along with this tutorial using any version of After Effects. So I'm going to close this welcome window, and we'll get a screen that looks like this. This is the project panel, and it's where we're going to start. First off, we need to create what's called a composition. A composition is a timeline which contains all of your footage elements. So to create one, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. We can right click and go New Composition, or we can go to the Composition menu at the top and select New Composition. You can also do Command N. So here we go, we've got our composition settings. If this looks a bit baffling, don't worry, there's loads of presets here to get you started. So I'm going to be using this preset HDTV 72025. What that means is this is 720p, which is a small HD resolution that tends to get broadcast over TV signals, and it's running at 25 frames a second. That's the standard frame rate here in Europe. If you're in America, you should use 29.97. The other HD resolution is 1080, which is the one that you find on Blu-ray. But we're going to use 720 in this example because it will use fewer computer resources. So our presets set up the width and height of our composition. And down here at the bottom, we can see that there's an option for duration. So at the moment, it's set to 5 seconds and 16 frames. I'm just going to even that out and make it 5 seconds and 0 frames. Here is the number of minutes, at the moment it's zero, and this one here is the number of hours. So we're just setting it to five seconds. And the background color is going to be black. You can change that by clicking here and choosing the color that you want. I think we're ready to click OK. So we've got this comp that's called Comp1. If you want to change the name, you might think that we should double click it, like in Photoshop or in Flash, but you'd be wrong. To change the name of a composition in After Effects, you have to click on it and then press Enter. So I can now call this Andy's Comp and press Enter again. We've now renamed it. To open a composition, you double click on it. But you can see it's already open down here. So we've got a blank composition. It's got no footage elements in it. And although it lasts for five seconds, there's nothing to be seen yet. So the next step is to import some footage. Now you might be wondering what footage is. It's not what you might conventionally understand as footage. In After Effects, footage could be a picture, a Photoshop file, an Illustrator file, a movie, a piece of audio. Anything that you bring into After Effects as an asset is called footage. So I'm just gonna find a couple of pictures to import. I've got a couple of pictures that I took on a recent trip to an aquarium. And you can find these linked on the YouTube page that contains this video. Just underneath the video, I'll put a little link and you can download these files to use yourself. So I've got this fish too small and this fish small PNG, and I'm gonna drag them into the project panel here. And I now have these two PNG files as footage items in After Effects. If we double click on them, we can see that they've got an alpha channel. So they've got transparent background, which makes them ideal for compositing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this fish small PNG into my composition, like so. We've now got a layer called fish small PNG. And you can see it's placed it right in the center of my composition. So at the moment, I'm using the selection tool, which you can access by pressing V or by clicking on the icon up here. And what you can do with the selection tool is you can select layers and move them around, like so. But you can also shrink them down by using these squares that surround the layer. And if you hold down Shift, that'll lock the aspect ratio of the thing that you're resizing. 
So I think that looks like a good size. I'm going to place it here on the left hand side. So to start making things move, there's a really useful acronym that I learned when I was learning After Effects, and it's called TRAPS, T-R-A-P-S. And if you can remember the acronym TRAPS, you'll be able to remember how to animate all of the parameters that exist in After Effects on any layer. So to start off, we're going to click on this layer fish small and press T. And T stands for opacity. So that's how transparent a layer is. And in order to animate the opacity, there's three steps that we need to follow. The first one is to click this stopwatch icon in our opacity parameter. The next is to move through time. So I'm going to move to two seconds. And the third and final one is to edit the value of the opacity. So at two seconds in, I want it to be 0%. So I've just typed in 0 there. And you can see that After Effects has created a second keyframe at two seconds where the value of the opacity is 0. Now here's a really useful keyboard shortcut that will help you a lot in After Effects. If you press J, it'll skip to the previous keyframe. And if you press K, it'll skip to the next one. So J and K. It's a lot more accurate than trying to scrub the time marker into the right place. So J and K. So to play this animation through, we need to press zero on the numeric keypad or go over here and press this RAM preview button. And what that'll do is it'll load all of those frames into the RAM and After Effects will play you an accurate version of what you're gonna see on screen. So there we go, we can see that our fish is fading from 100% to 0%, which makes it look like it's disappearing. So if I press J, I can skip to my second keyframe. And if I want, I could change that value to 50%, press enter. Now when we do a RAM preview by pressing zero on the numeric keypad or pressing this button here, we can see that it only fades to 50% opacity. So there we go, it's as simple as that. I'm gonna press J two times to skip back to my original keyframe. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press the stopwatch again and that just wipes all of the animation that we've done. We're done with opacity for the moment and we're going to move on to R, our next letter in our TRAPS acronym. So if I press R, we'll get our rotation parameter up and we can do some animation with that. So if you recall, we've got three steps to make. The first one is to click the stopwatch. The second one is to move through time. And the third one is to change the value. But hang on, we've got two values here. That's a little bit confusing. Let me just explain what they mean. This first one is how many times you want it to rotate. And the second one is how many degrees you want it to rotate by. You don't have to use both of them. You can just use one or the other, or you can use them both together. So let's take a look at that. This first value here is how many times you want your element to rotate. I'm going to type in one. And then I'm going to press J to skip to the beginning of my animation. And then I'm going to press zero to run preview it. So now we've got a fish that rotates over two seconds one time. So it goes the whole 360 degrees once. So I'm going to change that value back to zero. And I'm going to show you what the second parameter does. If I type in 90 degrees, you can see that our fish only rotates 90 degrees. So if I press zero now, you can see that our fish is rotating 90 degrees over two seconds. So I'm going to press J again, make sure I'm on my second keyframe. And in this first value, I'm going to change it back to one. And you can see that the combination of one full rotation and 90 degrees is going to mean that our fish rotates 360 degrees plus 90 degrees. So I'm going to press zero on the numeric keypad and you can see that it's doing one full rotation plus that 90 degrees extra. So that's rotation. I'm going to press J to go to my second keyframe. I'm going to change that value back to zero. So we've still got that nice one full 360 degree rotation. And we're going to look at our next parameter, A, which is anchor point. So A for anchor point. And in order to get that, I'm going to hold down shift 
and press A, what that does is it adds anchor point to my list of parameters here on my layer. But we need this rotation animation in order for our anchor point animation to make any difference. So we've got our anchor point parameter here. But first, I think we should look at what the anchor point actually is. If we click on our layer, we can see that there's a little crosshair in the middle of our fish. If we watch our animation, the fish is rotating around that anchor point in the center. So the anchor point controls where we're animating from. So we're rotating around this anchor point that's in the center of our fish. But we can adjust where the anchor point is. There's two different ways of doing that. The first one is to alter the values here. So you can see our anchor point is moving from the middle to the tail, or we could have it near the eye. Or we can use this tool here, the pan behind tool. You can access it by pressing Y or by clicking on this icon here. And what that enables us to do is move our anchor point to different points on our layer. I'm going to put it right on top of this fish's eye. And if we play our animation through now, we can see that the fish is now rotating around the eye. So just by moving the anchor point, we've changed our rotation animation, which is pretty cool. But another thing you can do is animate the anchor point. So if we wanted it to begin in the middle of the fish and then move to the fish's eye, we could get some really interesting animation results. So before we do that, let's reset the anchor point. So I'm just going to right click on it and go to reset. And that puts our anchor point right back in the middle again. So we've just got that rotation of the fish from the middle. And we're going to go through our three steps again. Click on the stopwatch in the anchor point parameter. We're going to move through time. And we're going to change the value. So I'm going to use the pan behind tool to move the anchor point onto the fish's eye. So it's going to move from keyframe one, where it's in the center, to keyframe two, where the anchor point is on the fish's eye. And it's really important that you use the pan behind tool for this, because the selection tool doesn't let you move the anchor point, it only lets you move the layer. So let's take a look at what that's done to our animation. If we play it through, you can see that our fish is beginning to animate from the center, and then the anchor point is moving towards the fish's eye. So what this does is it creates a kind of spiral animation. If I change the number of rotations to three, for example, in our rotation parameter, and play it through, we can see that the fish is sort of corkscrewing in on itself. It's creating a kind of spiral animation. So that's R and A in our TRAPS acronym. If we jump to the beginning by pressing J and click both of the stopwatches on these two parameters to delete those keyframes, we'll default back to our original fish. So the next parameter is P. So if I press P, we'll get our position parameter up. So the position parameter enables you to animate the position of any layer. So if I want my fish to begin on the left hand side, I'll need to press V to select my selection tool because I don't want to use the pan behind tool anymore. And I'm going to move my fish over to the left hand side of my composition like so. And then we're going to go through those three simple steps again. We're going to click on the stopwatch, move through time, and then change the value. So we can either edit these numbers here or we can just use the selection tool to move the fish over to the right hand side. And you can see as I'm doing that, we get this dotted line moving from left to right. That's called a motion path. And it shows you the animation of your position parameter. So there we go. If we play that through by pressing zero, we can see that we have a really nice animation of our fish moving from left to right. If I press J, I can skip back to my second keyframe. And if I want, I could just change the positions. So it now moves up to the top right hand corner. If we play that through, we'll get a RAM preview of our fish moving up to the top right hand corner. Equally, if I press J twice, I'll go back to the beginning. I can change the value so that the fish starts in the bottom left. 
press zero on the numeric keypad, you get that RAM preview, and our animation changes. So that's pretty cool. So next up, we're going to look at S, which stands for scale. That's the last of the letters in our TRAPS acronym. And I'm going to combine the scale with this position animation that I've done. So in order to add scale to the list of parameters, I hold down Shift and press S. So now scale will pop up. And we're going to follow the same three steps. Click on the stopwatch, move through time, and then make a change. Here we've got two values, the width and the height. And at the moment, they're locked together. So it's constraining the proportions of the fish so that it doesn't get squashed or stretched. And what we can do, we can alter these values. So if I pull them down, you can see our fish start shrinking. So I'm going to pull it down to about zero. And then if we play our animation through, our fish will gradually shrink as it moves up to the top right hand corner. So that's really simple. We've just animated the scale from 59.2% to 0%. And it now looks like our fish is flying off into the distance. So if we wanted to add some rotation to this, for example, we could hold down Shift and press R, and then we could add some rotation. So again, click on the stopwatch, move through time, and then make a change. So I'm going to select three. So that's three full rotations over two seconds. Press zero on the numeric keypad to play that through. And it's going to spin and shrink. So it's like it's been fired out of a catapult. There we go. Our fish is disappearing off into the right hand corner. And again, if we wanted to add some opacity to that, hold down shift and press T for opacity. Press J to skip to the beginning. Click on the stopwatch, move through time. And then I could adjust the opacity to zero. So now we've got our fish moving from the bottom left to the top right, scaling down from 59.2% to 0.2%, rotating three times, and moving from 100% opacity to 0%. So let's press J to skip to the beginning and then zero on the numeric keypad. You can see that it's disappearing off into the distance like so. So if you remember the acronym TRAPS, you'll be able to remember how to animate anything in After Effects. So that's the end of my basics tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.